Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining. Um, I'm going to get started in a few minutes, um, just because we're waiting for a few more people to come along that have signed up. Um, so get comfortable, we'll be starting in a couple of minutes, okay? All right then, I think we're going to make a start. Um, so good afternoon everyone, thank you very much for coming along today. So my name is Jim Calcutt, I'm a Schools and Colleges Liaison Officer at Royal Holloway uh, and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, commuting versus living on campus, so accommodation options when you're at university. Um, so, but before I kick off and get started, just want to make sure that you can all hear me and the technology is working. Um, so we're just going to give the chat function uh, a quick go. So you should be able to see the chat function on the right hand side uh, and very, very easy. Just please if you could pop a yes or no in just to make sure that you can hear me uh, loud and clear. I'm going to carry on filling the noise so you can test out that you can hear me. I'm seeing a couple of yeses, which is excellent. Haven't seen any no's yet, which is really good. Um, so I think we will move on. Um, so a little bit about Royal Holloway before I explain kind of how today's going to work. So um, hopefully you all kind of all know of Royal Holloway. That's kind of how you're here today because you've heard of us or you've been on our website or anything like that. But we're a campus university set just outside of central London in Surrey, in Egham. Um, and as you can see, we have a lovely 135 acre uh, woodland campus. Uh, and on the left hand side here, you have a list of all the courses that we offer and so that students can study. Um, if you are kind of interested in, in anything else that, that we can offer at Royal Holloway, so the courses and, and our course portfolio and anything like that, please do check out our website at www.royalholloway.ac.uk. Um, but for the content today, um, as I said, we're going to be talking about commuting versus living on campus. So first and foremost, I'm going to talk for maybe 15 or 20 minutes, uh, just giving an introduction to some of the things that you should consider when thinking about where to live at university. Uh, I'm then going to talk about the different types of accommodation and kind of their, their positives and negatives, so to speak. Uh, a little bit about housing support and other things to consider and then we're joined by uh, a wonderful student ambassador uh, student ambassador philippa um here today who's going to be uh, able to answer your questions uh, unfortunately our other ambassador is is unavailable and is unable to attend so i will be filling in uh, the void of the voice of living on campus as i'm a former Royal Holloway student that did live on campus so if you have any questions um about living on campus living at home and commuting anything like that, please do pop them in the chat um as we go along and i'll be able to collect them together and, and, and ask them um, and answer them, I guess, um, alongside our pre-submitted questions. Um, so as I said, I'm going to be talking for about 15 or 20 minutes, and then we're going to go over to the Q&A element of the session. But before we or before we kind of talk in, you know, talk about kind of the pros and cons and answer the questions, first and foremost, there's lots of things to consider, such as, you know, when you're thinking about where to live. Um, so so where, where can you live at university? There's kind of three main options. Um, so studying at university, you can live at home and commute to university if you live kind of in, a, in the local area or relatively local. Uh, you can live in a shared house, often in the private sector in the local area as well, with course mates or friends that you've made whilst at university. 
uh, or you can live in university uh, accommodation or university residence, often known as halls of residence as well. So just kind of a little bit on the terminology there. So the kind of just the same thing, uh, which is run by the university, often on university land, or university ground. It could be on the campus if it's a campus university or nearby the university if it's a city university. Um, often in, uh, in the first year, students will either live at home or live in university residence, so university accommodation. And then in the second and third year, students again may live at home and commute or live in a shared house. Um, that doesn't mean that the option to live in a, in the university accommodation is, is impossible in your second and third year. However, often students will move into the local area and accommodation is often reserved at university for first year students, students with disabilities and other students that may need uh, accommodation, such as students that have come back from a year abroad. Um, and a couple of things to consider when looking at like student accommodation. So thinking about shared accommodation uh, in this local area, but also halls of residence. Um, you need to, when choosing kind of the right halls, maybe in your first year or whatever, there's a few things that you need to consider. Um, first and foremost, it's the style of the halls of residence. So there's a number of different styles of university accommodation, uh, on-campus accommodation and, and university halls. Um, at Royal Holloway, we have three styles. We have the corridor style, um, which is kind of a bit like a dorm, uh, where you have your own room on a corridor with maybe 80 other students. Um, you may share a bathroom and share and, and you know have your meals cooked for you. Um, one of the kind of we'll talk about the key benefits and stuff about living in accommodation. But one of the key benefits of the corridor style is that you're living with lots of other people. And um, you're living, as I said, kind of all on one floor um, near lots of no, lots of people and meet loads of people uh, really quickly. You also have the flat style of accommodation, which is obviously quite self-explanatory. You live in a flat, a self-enclosed flat with um, you know maybe seven or eight other people that you kind of may share um, social facilities with, such as um, a kitchen or maybe even a bathroom and another social area and have your own room. And then finally, we have a townhouse, which is kind of a smaller sort of flat, I guess. Maybe you'll share that with maybe three to six other people and you'll share a number of bathrooms, share a kitchen and social area as well and have your own room. Um, so when considering if you are thinking about living on campus and living in university halls, it's living, you know, think about the different style of hall that you might want to live in. Price, of course, is vitally important in all instances. Um, think about how much um, accommodation is going to cost you, whether that's in the in the, uh, the private sector, in the local area, on campus as a part of the university's halls, or at home even, uh, if your parents and carers will be charging you rent or, or, or money, or getting to pay money to contribute to bills and stuff. And it's important to look into what's included here as well. Usually with halls of residence, um, university halls of residence, it'll all be kind of inclusive package. So in, in the price that you pay, you'll be paying for your rent, You'll be paying for your bills and internet and stuff like that as well. Um, private sector is a little bit of a mixture. You may just pay for your rent and then have to pay for your bills, etc., separately. Um, or it might be a case where you you get a deal in your in your in the local area with the landlord, and um, where you kind of have everything included as well. So again, it's worth looking at kind of the different costs, and different prices, and kind of working out what's included in these. Self catered or self catered? Again, this is more kind of applicable for on campus accommodation. Um, so thinking about whether or not you want your meals cooked for you, essentially paying as you go with, with your meals in, a, in, a, in like a canteen or, or a food hall uh, and then self-catered as well, cooking for yourself um, and, you know, buying your own food and, and making your own stuff again can be really, a really important decision to make. Uh, whether or not you have an ensuite or a, or a shared bathroom, again, different options kind of give you different different things. Um, often this is kind of one of the big areas that students really struggle with is, the, is, the, is thinking about sharing a bathroom. Um, from students that I've spoken to that have lived in in accommodation with the shared bathroom, it's actually not really that much of an issue. And um, there's plenty of facilities. They're regularly cleaned. It's something that you don't have to do. You don't have to clean those shared facilities. They're cleaned by cleaners, um, which is one less job for you to, to think about. Um, whereas actually, so, you know, on the other hand, some students would like the idea of having an ensuite and having their own bathroom and stuff like that. Uh, again, which comes with a with a bit more of a price, sort of a higher price tag attached to it. Um, whether or not you want to be on campus, so directly on campus, or if you want to be a short bus ride or walk away. Uh, again, this is applicable for both campus and uh, city universities. So some campus universities like Royal Holloway, we have a lot of our accommodation on site, but we also have one accommodation block in the local area, um, a you know, really short bus ride away or maybe a 10 or 15 minute walk away. Um, with city universities, again, chances are you won't have a campus in the city. So you may be having to get a bus or a tube or a train or whatever to your accommodation. So again, it's worth considering kind of location where that's going to be situated, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and parking and non-parking, again, another one for, for, for transport. If you have a car and you drive, um, it's worth considering, you know, whether or not you're going to have to park your car where you live, uh, whether or not you're going to even need your car. Um, at Royal Holloway, uh, students that live in Halls Residence often are, are advised or, or actively encourage not to bring their car onto campus uh, and may not be able to receive a, a parking a sort of a parking permit if you're a commuting student you can apply for a parking permit can, um appreciate that you live kind of a, a certain distance away i believe it's one it's a one mile radius away you can apply for a parking permit 
Um, but but again, if you're thinking about kind of that on-campus accommodation, it's worth considering whether or not you want a car and if you need a car and making sure that there's parking available. Um, usually with accommodation, when applying for accommodation, if you are going to apply for university accommodation, um, you only apply to your firm choice, only able often to apply for your firm choice. And this is once you've made your firm choice, basically. Um, accommodation applications often open around the end of April, early May time and close around sort of the sort of early to mid July time. Um, so again, you have a good kind of period of time to decide on your firm insurance and then make an application to accommodation uh, within at that university. Um, so we're going to go through the kind of the three different types, as I've outlined, the living at home, living on campus uh, or in university accommodation and living in the local area. And we're just going to talk through some of the pros and cons of these things um, or how I've kind of outlined the pros and cons of these. Um, so we'll start by living at home. Um, so there's a number of advantages of, of living at home, of course. First and foremost, you don't have to move. You don't have to move anywhere. You can stay in the same bedroom. You don't have to pack up or, or move anywhere. You don't have to you know, really get anything alongside that as well. So that's quite a, kind of a big advantage. Um, in theory, you should save money overall because you are living at home. Um, not to say that your parents or carers might not um, ask you to contribute to rent or food or anything like that, but it may be cheaper or probably will be a lot cheaper than perhaps living in university accommodation or living in the, or living in the private sector. Um, and you may be able, be able to get help with your chores. Again, this might be a, a real sort of grand generalization. It depends on your own circumstances, um, but it might mean that you do less cooking or cleaning or you or, or might not even have to do your own laundry um, uh, by kind of living at home um, in comparison to living independently on your own elsewhere. Um, so that's kind of some of the sort of key advantages and a couple of the disadvantages, perhaps. So it may be more difficult adjusting to university and meeting new people. Lots of universities, Royal Holloway included, do make a real uh, serious effort to make sure that commuting students or students that do live at home and travel to university um, do still get the university experience and are, and are able to adjust and settle into university as much as students live on campus. But this may be a little bit more, a bit more challenging or might need involve a little bit more effort from, from you. Um, there's not as much independence or freedom, perhaps. Again, this depends on your own personal circumstances, but obviously if you're living at home um, and perhaps, you know, if you're said so you're being helped out with chores or like say for example you're cooking or cleaning or um your you know laundry is being done that's obviously a little bit less independence and um, for you from kind of from a from a, that standpoint and obviously you're going to have the added travel time to get to lectures and social events as well so considering perhaps if you have a nine o'clock lecture having to leave a lot earlier to get to that nine o'clock lecture and similarly if you are um you know having a thriving social life and you're looking to go out and, and spend time with friends thinking about how you're going to get home again um or you know having to crash somewhere you know at, at someone's house or something like that and um, maybe kind of a little bit more of a challenge again. So they're not kind of major disadvantages, they're just things to kind of really consider when, when thinking about making this choice. Uh, our next is university accommodation. Um, so this gives you lots of chances to meet new people and make new friends as well, which is which is great because you're kind of all thrown into an accommodation block, not really knowing each other, and you're gonna have to kind of adapt to, and, and really understand and respect each other's space and, and stuff because you're kind of living together. It really eases you into living away from home for the first time, and I can say that having lived in university accommodation when I was a student, um, it really helped me adapt and really uh, rely on myself a lot more um, to you know, really live on my own and become independent and really helped when I left university and moved in, moved into a place on my own after university. Um, and your university can also provide you with the extra support on campus when you're there. So stuff like security, um, if necessary, as well as other things that are really local and close by. Um, the other, obviously, I guess, uh, kind of benefit here is that you are perhaps in the middle of the university. So you have every all the amenities that the university has really on your doorstep. Maybe some disadvantages. There's obviously no guarantee that you'll get your first choice accommodation. Um, some universities do try and guarantee maybe a top three or a top five or whatever, but there's no guarantee that you'll be able to you know, get that first choice. If you're going to go into a shared room, so if you're going to share a room with someone, you don't always get the opportunity to pick who you live with, which can be a really important thing, I guess. Um, I've heard good stuff and bad stuff about that. I've heard stories of students who have you know, made their best friend because they've shared a room with them. I've heard stories of students whose um, housemate never moved it, their roommate never moved in, so they had this massive room to themselves. And equally, I've heard you know, things where one student is a little bit nocturnal and goes to the library in the evening, or one student's kind of up and, around, up and about in the day, which can obviously conflict with schedules. So, Again, that may be a little bit of a disadvantage if you live in a shared room. Um, and then finally, you may be living with um, lots of other students who may be noisy or messy. They might not have the same sort of standards that you have, um, which can obviously be a challenge. And um, there's, again, no guarantee always that you're going to live with people that you know or live with people that you've met before or live with people that you, you might not, you might even get on with. Um, 
again, I was very lucky when I lived in accommodation. I got on with ev pretty much everyone I lived with. And we all came from very different backgrounds, very different um, sort of cultures and ages and stuff like that. Um, but actually, we all worked together to kind of really understand one another and, and, and live together. And I became very close friends with, with lots of people I live with and live with them throughout. So, again, there's, there's pros and cons, I guess, with this one. You know, it may be a case that you're living with people that may be a little bit messy, but you may also be able to help them out in their messiness and help them kind of adjust and, and live in a style that is, is kind of more appropriate to you. Then finally, we have renting in the private sector. So kind of living in the local area with your friends, no pun intended. Um, again, the advantages here is that you can choose where you want to live, of course. Um, you can actually go out with your housemates and look at houses in the local area or flats in the local area, actually decide where you live and, and work out what's important to you. You can choose who you live with as well. You can actually live with people that you enjoy or sp like, like spending time with or know that are really clean and tidy and all that type of stuff um, and that you know you, you can get on with. And there's also a range of options and prices on that market as well. So there's going to be a mixture of opportunities, a mixture of options in the local area that you're living in. And um, there may be stuff that's really, really expensive that you may not be able to afford or you know, together you may be able to afford, but there may be stuff that's kind of more in your price range as well or things that are below your price range. So it's really down to you to, to be able to decide. You have that kind of independence and uh, the ability to decide kind of where you're going to live. The disadvantage, I guess, is that you may be a little bit further away from campus or a lot further away from campus or from the university, depending on where you're living. Um, you'll need to budget uh, and manage your money probably a bit better uh, and budget for stuff like bills, uh, TV license, internet, all that type of stuff. Um, that may have already been in, in, uh, covered in your halls of residence or if you're living at home, maybe it will be covered in kind of maybe some money you've contributed to your house, uh, to your parents and carers, or you know may have been covered by them automatically. Um, and finally, if there's a problem with the property, so where you're living, you'll have to sort that out with the landlord or the agent. So it's not a case like with, a comp with, with halls of residence where you just ring up the halls of residence team, they'll come down and sort everything out for you. Or if you're at home, you just kind of grab, you know, your said parent or carer and they'll be able to come help you sort something out. With this, you're going to have to contact your, your landlord or, their, or the agent, the, the letting agent, to really get things sorted, which can sometimes be done really quickly if, you have, if you're lucky to have a really good, um, good agent or a really good landlord, um, but also may take a little bit longer um, to be done as well. So they're kind of the, some of the key sort of pros and cons, I guess, to these three options. And um, before we kind of go on to the, the Q&A element, and I really encourage you guys to start thinking about some questions, popping them in the chat so that we can really kind of get as, as much out of, that, out, of that, out of that element of this session. Um, I'm going to talk about housing support and general tips as well. So, um, so from, from a housing support perspective, um, most university students' unions will offer lots of support for students and advice when looking for housing, so both on and off campus. Um, the Students Unit at Royal Holloway, for example, offer housemate events. So it's like speed dating, but with housemates. So you kind of go around and chat to people and meet new people if you're kind of struggling to find people to live with. Um, they also do contract checking as well, which can be really, really important, especially if it's the first time that you've you know, rented a house the, or rented a flat in the local area, which for most of you it probably will be. Um, they can really go through your contract with you, make sure that everything's in order, make sure you're not being ripped off, make sure that you're covered uh, and everything's kind of safe and ready for you to go. Um, they may also be able to um, you know, help you with, with communicating and contacting your landlord or contacting your letting agent, again, which can be quite a daunting task sometimes. And um, so they're kind of there as well to support you in that process. Uh, the university's health and well-being teams as well will be able to help you with advice about living with others and supporting you when you move on, you know, either on campus or off campus. Um, especially like living with others and kind of how to, you know, con conflict resolution and stuff like that. And um, the health and well-being teams at universities are really uh, helpful for that. Um, some universities will also have um, hall, like hall life teams as well, which are older students that live in a flat in that halls of residence who are there to, again, sort out any grievances, but also um, organize and run like really fun social events and, and kind of really make sure that that university adjustment is, is, is as good as possible. And finally, you have um, the Citizens Advice Bureau as well, which is a free and impartial uh, non-university specific um, website organization that can help with student housing as well. So this is a, a general body which can help with loads of different issues, but one of them is, is, is student housing. So they can help you with advice and support you in, in different claims and different things as well. So there's lots of kind of support out there for you and available to you. So that is all the information from me. That's kind of a, a bit of a whistle stop tour of, um, of you know, university accommodation and, you know, the different options that are available to you. What I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to pop my camera on. I'm going to get our student ambassador, Philippa, to also do that as well. Uh, and basically, we're going to answer your questions. Um, so we've had a few pre-submitted questions. Um, and we've also had, um, yeah, there's quite a few pre-submitted questions and there's a few questions in the chat. So uh, we'll start with the probably the pre-submitted ones. Um, and then we'll we'll go on from there. Um, I'm just I said I'll wait for for Philippa to pop her camera on, and then we'll we'll get started. Hi, yes, I am here. I'm just struggling to turn my camera on, so that's all right. No worries. 
Um, okay, that's fine. Um, did you, while, while you're doing that, did you want to introduce yourself and just kind of explain, like, um, I guess, what you're studying, what year of study you're in, and um, what your kind of accommodation sort of experience is with the university? Yeah, so um, I'm currently a postgraduate student. I'm doing my master's in geopolitics and security. Um, I started university in 2015 um, doing geography, politics, and international relations, and I lived in Founders Hall in my first year. Um, so shared accommodation, like the most university experience you could imagine, really. Um, and then I moved into private housing in my second and third years, um, you know, just to get that different experience of university, you know, live on my own and try and attempt to be an adult. And then um, now I am a commuting student. So I moved to London after I graduated and lived here for a couple of years because I took a break between my undergraduate and my postgraduate and now I've been commuting in when we've been allowed to um, Royal Holloway in Egham so yeah I sort of cover all of the accommodation spectrum of, of every type of accommodation you could live in. You're the perfect person to talk about university accommodation then really because you're kind yeah. of as like I said you cover all bases which is excellent. Um, as I said um, obviously unfortunately we we're going to have another student ambassador today as well who's going to talk about like living on campus but as, as Philip has explained, she's got great experiences while living on campus, living in a local area. I'm also here as well. It was a, quite a while ago that I was at university, but I did live on accommodation at Royal Holloway and I also lived in the local area as well. Um, I never kind of commuted to university. Um, I kind of have that aspect as well. So hopefully I'll be able to contribute a little bit into that as well. And you're not just kind of on your own, Philippa. Um, so we're going to get started, as I said, with some of the pre-submitted questions. So um, as kind of obviously you lived in Founders, so you're probably the best person really suited for a question like this. But what would you say is the average cost of uh, like a day's meal in, the, in catered accommodation? Yeah, so in well, in Founders specifically, you have a pantry. So you've got a microwave, a toaster, a kettle. Um, so I would usually just have my evening meal in the dining hall. Um, and then on the weekend, they would do brunch. So everyone would go down and have have brunch in the dining hall. It was about... I'd say three pounds per meal, so not expensive at all, um, and loads of options. You can eat it there, and it's kind of a, quite a nice, like, you know, we, I'd meet up with my friends and we'd go for dinner at the same time and all sit around the table and chat and have a catch up. Um, and on the weekend, we'd do the same as well. But then there's the option to take it away if you're super busy, you know, you can just grab something and go. So when I moved to university, it was a big thing anyway, moving away from home. And so I just wanted for the first year at least to have that. Um, something you know extra to not have to worry about um and it was just i think my parents were grateful to know that i would at least be fed <laughs> yeah very wise very wise i lived in self-catered halls and it was perhaps the worst decision i could have made because i could not cook for life so and um, that, that's very sensible um i should kind of add on to that as well at royal holloway specifically and other universities will have different ways of doing it so with our catered accommodation it's like pay as you go so you pay for your meals as you go you don't pay for like you don't pay like um a bulk price for all of your meals um, so students who live in catered halls get 50% off in their dining hall. So founders, if you lived in founders, you'll get 50% off in founders dining hall um, by using your college card. So it's a bit cheaper if you are living in catered accommodation. And also it gives you a bit of independence. Like say for example, you wanted to go for like Anandos in the evening. You haven't already paid for a meal, um, which is kind of a nice little bit of kind of independence and a bit of freedom that you have. Um, so that's worth kind of saying. Um, I believe you also get around 25% off if you're using your college card elsewhere on campus, so like on the cafes or in the other dining halls and stuff like that. So other universities will have that different kind of ways of dealing with that, but that's kind of what we have at, at Royal Holloway as well. Um, I've been asked what the pricing is like for accommodation and halls. Um, so this is kind of really varied and it really changes every year. Um, so uh, currently the kind of the price bracket, it really depends on what you have, what you want. So um, often it's a lot cheaper to have a shared room a shared room, shared bathroom, like catered, is, is often kind of the cheapest option. Um, and that's probably around maybe three and a half thousand pounds for the whole year, um, paid kind of in term and instalments. Um, and that kind of that, that price bracket goes straight up to, or goes kind of in, obviously lots of places in between, but goes up to around eight thousand pounds as well for, you know, a double room en suite um, or kind of a, a shared bathroom with one or two other people self catered and like a big social area. So the best place to check that out is the university website. So Royal Holloway's accommodation site is the best place to check out kind of the different price bra uh, price brackets and pi price bands and what's included in that. And I'll pop a link in the chat at the end as well, kind of with all of that information or kind of the links to that information. Um, what would you say again it's kind of you can kind of answer on both fronts here as well philippa so what would you say is the benefit of living at home and what would you say is the benefit of living on campus and i guess what's the benefit of living like in the local area as well 
Yeah, so I think definitely living on campus, especially in my first year, I found it was such a nice integration to get to meet everybody because you didn't have to really make an effort to meet people. There were there was always somebody around, you know, somebody new, some you know, it was super easy to make friends. And then moving on into second and third year, you've sort of established your friendship group and you're, you know, you don't feel the need to be friends with everybody anymore. <laughs> um so it's kind of nicer to have that as well, the kind of like maturity of living in the local area, you're a bit more independent. You know, you don't have to go and eat at the dining hall if you want to. You know, you can make your own meals and you have that independence of paying bills and stuff. Um, and also being, you know, being in the local area, there's so much to go and see and do. And there's, so, yeah, there's so much that is around that you don't necessarily know in your first year. You know, you get to know the area, you get to go to Windsor, you get to go to Staines, go into London and it's kind of things that you wouldn't initially think of if you're only living on campus. It sort of expands your world a bit. Then commuting in, I think it's, it requires you to be a lot more regimented with your degree. You know, there's so many distractions. <laughs> um, so you're required to sort of manage your time a lot better, I think. And where you're not in that university environment all the time, you have to, yeah, you have to manage your time better. But it's also quite nice to have those home comforts and know that you can escape to university. And when you're there, you know, you're fully emerged in it. You're there for a reason and then when you're home you can sort of relax a bit because you're not constantly in that academic environment yeah i i, I completely agree with pretty much all you've everything you've said to be honest with you um so from kind of a, an on-campus perspective um it's it, it does make a lot it does make adjusting a lot easier i think kind of having like you said like having everything kind of there kind of is really good um kind of living in the local area um that for me was like such a such a like such a strange but great experience um, especially when I consider like leaving university. So as soon as I left university, I, I, I didn't go back home. I rented a flat straight away from university. Um, and I don't think I would have been able to be able to do that kind of from a day to day perspective or from a, like a, like a technical perspective. I actually, you know, looking at houses, renting, all that type of stuff and et cetera, et cetera, all the sort of boring adult stuff. Um, if I hadn't lived in the local area with friends and stuff like that, um, I loved living in the local area. I loved, I, I, I didn't mind living in halls. But I much preferred my second or third year when I lived in the local area. I lived with people that I really enjoyed living with. And I said I lived with two people the whole way through my, my time at university. They're my closest friends at university. Um, so it was kind of like just living with your best friends. It, it was really nice. Um, but also because it was our own space, we could just, within reason, make it homely and customise it as, as, as much as we could, um, which was really cool as well. And like, kind of like what you're saying about like being a commuting student, kind of having that, that break from university by going home. I found that in my second and third year living off campus. Um, I found that I'd get all of my stuff done on campus. I lived around like maybe like 15 minute walk away from campus. I lived like for anyone in the area, I lived near Tesco uh, where I used to live. Um, so it was like a 15 minute walk, 20 minute walk from campus. So I knew when I was going home that I was done for the day. That was kind of like my, my shut off. And I made a real effort to get into like a nine to five routine. So I'd be, my working time would be nine to five. And then my evening would be kind of down to me to do other bits and pieces and kind of prepping for like, you know, the next day or whatever. So again, by kind of getting myself into that routine, that really helped me concentrate on my work. But also when I left university again, really helped me go into the job market and stuff because I'd already got into that type of routine and had that separation. Um, how easy would you say it was adjusting um, to university when living on campus? So in your first year, how easy was it kind of that, that beginning sort of first couple of weeks to adjust? Um, well, for me, definitely, I was ready to leave home. I I love my family, but I was ready to move out. And so although I had those sort of underlying nerves, I knew that I was ready for that move. And everybody, I, I knew that everybody was in the same position, you know, everybody was moving away from home for the first time. So it makes it slightly less, less nerve wracking knowing everybody else is in the same position. And especially in those first couple of weeks, everybody's so open to meeting new people in, in the first year. And the second and third year students are also they know they remember what it was like to be starting and to be moving away from home so everyone especially in those first weeks is just so welcoming and accommodating it really makes that transition a lot easier mm. i i agree i i really struggled in my first term i was proper proper homesick i came like i moved from uh like i didn't have really have the option to commute or not so i lived um i grew up in like southeast kent so i was quite far away from Royal holloway um, I couldn't really travel there like on a daily basis. So I kind of had to move, but I guess I was quite, quite like protected in some sense. I hadn't really stayed away from home that much or anything like that. So 
there was a bit of a shock kind of moving to university and i said the first term was i had, i was quite homesick and stuff but like like you said like everyone was really welcoming kind of the university itself that university environment kind of you get really sort of tangled up in it or, or kind of really go with the flow eventually and you kind of really get into that that rhythm um, and meet loads of people again like you said older students students in the same year as you who are kind of in similar situations or have had similar experiences and stuff um and i think by being on campus you kind of automatically kind of throw yourself into stuff as well you throw yourself into events and throw yourself into socializing and into your course and stuff um so yeah i think that's kind of a, a really important point um how, how have you found with like your masters obviously you've had taken a bit of time out and now you're kind of returning back how did you find obviously it's difficult as well in the pandemic and stuff like that how have you found commuting when you've been able to commute and how how have you found that experience of kind of settling in um well when we were allowed on campus <laughs> um i kind of really liked the separation of having university to be about studying and then when I came home you know because I have a job as well so I knew that the time that I was on campus I was purely dedicated to doing my university work and I you know I'd be there for the whole day so I'd meet up with people I'd get lunch I'd go to the library you know I'd really make the most of the time that I had there because I knew that when I got home I wouldn't perhaps have as much as an opportunity but I live in London so luckily I'm really you know I can get the bus straight to Senate House, which is the library that we have access to as University of London. So that's been really helpful to have an, a space that is close to me that was also dedicated to like studying in university. Because I find just I've got a, like a home office, but I find that being in the like academic environment, just the whole vibe really helps contribute to how productive I'm able to be. Um, but doing a master's, you're required to be so independent anyway. And I think that's something that I learned in my third year, just how as I work, I work as a person. I prefer to make the most of my time when I'm in that academic environment. Mm. So it hasn't been as difficult of a transition. Yeah, yeah. thank you. That was really, uh, really, really good, good kind of point to make. Um, so somebody's asked, is Kingswood one and Kingswood two technically not on campus? Yeah, no, so Kingswood isn't on campus. So all of our accommodation bar Kingswood is on campus or just over the road. So George Elliott is just over the road. Um, Kingswood is in Englefield Green, which is kind of the town or village next to Egham, where Royal Holloway is. Um, but it's not too far away in the sense, you, I said it's maybe like a 10, 15 minute walk. And then there's also a bus that runs from campus to Kingswood um, quite regularly as well. So you can kind of get to and from Kingswood. Um, Philippa, what would you say is the best accommodation on campus? Again, you might be slightly biased, but what would you say is, from your experience, what was the best accommodation on campus? I was going to say, I think I'm a bit biased because I lived in Founders, because how many people can say they lived in a castle? Like, the pictures on the screen, how many people can say that they lived in a castle? And it was just such a brilliant, you know, it kind of felt like we were all at boarding school or living in Harry Potter or something, you know. Everyone was next door and having that corridor, you know, we used to just get up to such mischief, like, and feel like we were living in a film so it was something that i to have that experience i was willing to share a bathroom and live in catered accommodation because i wanted to have that just sort of all it like all engulfing experience but i think having as well i've got friends now who are in uh, the new george Eliot, and it looks absolutely amazing like i'm so jealous that they have this basically luxury housing so i think that would be my my set i didn't live there but I wish I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. George Elliot is is something 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 else, I think. Um I lived in Chuke, which is like the other end of campus, um, which is uh I live I lived like plush. I had a double room en suite, shared, you know, shared kitchen and stuff like that. Um so yeah, that was um that was great. You know, I had like the space and I had loads of space, which was really cool. Uh it kind of set me up for a bit of a fall when I moved into my uh student house in my second or third year because it was like half the size um but it was it was a nice kind of year while it was last i i really enjoyed living in self-catered halls um even though i literally couldn't cook and that, it was a really hard <laughs> lesson to learn um it was just quite I, I felt i felt really independent in that respect i felt kind of really um i felt like i was kind of doing a, it was slightly like a mixture of a university experience but also kind of like an adult adult experience as well kind of you know having to cook my meals and do all that type of stuff even though i was kind of in this safe um community I had loads of friends that lived in Founders. I was dead jealous of all of them living for living in Founders. Um, they had so many more friends than me because I just met so many more people living in Founders. Um, and even now, a friend of mine um, from university who lived in Founders will be talking about somebody. Be like, oh, do you know so and so and so and so and so and so? And I'm like, no, but like, oh, they lived in Founders. That's why. Um, and it's kind of has that its own like mini little community. And it's the same with George Eliot over the road. They have their own kind of little mini community. And it's the same with Kingswood as well. Um, you kind of 
have build and kind of because you're kind of all close together or like in the same space or like in Kingswood case off campus you kind of have that community among amongst yourselves which is really cool um so yeah I think even though I lived in Chuuk I think well, like we were saying about you know when when else are you going to have the chance to live in a castle um, I kind of really agree with that and I would say yeah even though it's the oldest founders is probably still still top still up there um, yeah definitely for, and all of the all of my like core friendship group are the people that I met literally in my first week living in Founders. You know, they they all lived on on the same corridor as me and Founders. You know, we've been I've had a group chat now for like five years. Um, so and they were the people who I probably met on my first day, and the the friendships just last from having that shared experience. Yeah. Were you east or west? East. Yeah, the the east side west side rivalry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, something else, something else. And the founders and Reed rivalry as well. Oh, really? Okay, I've not heard of that one. It's interesting. It's interesting. I guess both <laughs> catered, aren't they? Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, are there any other sources we can use for private renting? So I've been on Right Move and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I'll um, I, I when I looked into private housing, I basically used the university's housing search, so it kind of had all like the approved landlords on there, but. We also did use like things like Zoopla and Rightmove and stuff like that. So it's kind of really up to you. Um, the benefit of the, I said with Royal Holloway, we have a house search um, kind of app. It's not really an app, but a web page and stuff, um, which is again has like SU approved um, landlords. Um, so that was really um, kind of nice because you kind of felt a little bit like you're a bit trusted. I think how I got my house though was a bit of like a backwards way. We did use Rightmove and Zoopla and stuff like that and the house search, but my my housemate had a friend who played netball who was in her third year leaving university. And said that her landlord was great and basically passed his number on to my friend and that's how we that's how we got our house basically because we gave him a ring and said can we come and have a look around um so so yeah there's, there's many different ways many different ways and there's a few landlords in the area that have a really good reputation um for being really great landlords and stuff so again you kind of have those conversations as you go through um do you remember how you kind of found your um your off-campus accommodation philippa yeah so i think when i was because i started a couple of years ago I don't think the housing search existed yet, or I think it was created maybe maybe in my final year. So I think we just called around all of the estate agents. We decided, you know, okay, we need to live in a group of four or five. You know, we split up our friendship group. So it was the most dramatic thing to ever happen to me as an 18 year old. Um, and, you know, I just called around the estate agents and said, look, this is, the, this is how much we want to spend. There's four of us and we're at Royal Holloway. And I went on countless viewings. Um, yeah and eventually found the place that I moved into and it was just it was I could see the back gate from my window so wow. it was such a perfect location in my second year and I lived in Egham and then in my third year I moved to Englefield Green and I found that through a friend so it was it was nice to live in the two different places and and really experience the local area and you know I used to walk to Windsor from my house in Englefield Green and as a third year student I found that really nice to be able to go on a walk and escape from dissertation stress <laughs> yeah yeah well, where, where did you prefer living angle for green or egham i think egham because again the rivalry is at royal holloway they're yeah. brilliant but i think yeah. all you know i moved in with a different friendship group so at the time all of my friends lived in egham and i was jealous that they were all just a couple of streets away from each other mm. um and also being so close to the shops <laughs> you know yeah. it's a big hill going up to angle green and i didn't have a car or anything so I would walk with my shopping and that was my workout. It is a very big hill. I remember being a first year student and doing a shop at Tesco and not being able to get a taxi. So we had to walk a trolley up Egham Hill into our accommodation. Um, it is a big hill. Um, and I also agree Egham is, is superior purely for the fact that, yeah, all the shops are there. You have loads of stuff there, which is great. But Englefield Green also has loads of cool stuff. Like um, you have loads of like, I said, like little like villagey shops and it's a little, it, cause it is a bit smaller because it's a village. Um, it's kind of got a bit more of like a village community kind of feel to it as well. Um, and Englefield Green and Egham basically is comprised of like sort of from a from a population perspective is students, um, retired people and families. So it's quite a nice like mixture. It's kind of a nice mixture of things. And weirdly, it kind of works really nicely as well in, in both areas. Um, what are uh, what do you do? Uh, this is probably a really good one for you, Philippa. What do you do? Um, what do 30 week letting period students do? Like when they get, have to move out and, and move in and move out stuff during Easter and Christmas vacations. Obviously you're in Founders, which is a 30 week letting period. What did you what did you do in that instance? Yeah, so I moved out all of my stuff. Luckily my parents were able to come and help me pack up the car and move everything out. But 
I found that in first year, most of the students go home for those long breaks because it's the first time you're really living away from home and everyone hasn't seen their friends from school and stuff. There's not really a lot of people around campus who are in their first year at that time. So I didn't feel like I was missing out or anything by having to move out. But I had a friend who lived in Scotland and obviously it's a bit of a drive for her parents to come down from Scotland. So she would just, the university had storage. So she would just put all of her stuff into storage and catch a flight back up to Scotland. So there are options for whether you you have the means to be able to take all your stuff home or you can keep it at the university if you want to. But I did learn to be a light packer and a minimalist decorator. Yeah, I think that's the benefit of a 30 week letting period. I lived in living in Duke, we had 38 weeks and I just accumulated so much stuff. I forgot that um, when you move out again, you have to take everything with you. So, you know, whenever I'd gone home and picked up, I don't know, again, showing my age, I picked up like 20 DVDs. Um, at least they're not, you know, didn't say videos, but yeah, to picking up 20 mm -hmm. DVDs every time and stuff. And then you had to move out, you know, hundreds of DVDs and books and stuff. Um, it was a nightmare at the end of the year. Um, but and yeah, like I, I completely agree with you. Like I, would, you know, most students do go home in Christmas, especially Christmas. Um, less so, I guess, at Easter, um, because usually it's kind of exam prep and stuff and, and and that type of stuff. But still, you know, students will go home for maybe a couple of weeks at least out of the kind of the four weeks. Um, so really, your room is just a is just storage in that respect. Um, so yeah, and as you said, it gives you that benefit of of being a light packer and um, and being able to you know condense all your stuff into kind of a small space I guess um, which is obviously a, a fantastic life skill in general anyway um, so somebody's following up from that somebody's asked how is the how is that different from 38 week letting period so with the 30 week letting period as, as Philip said you have to you move out at Christmas and Easter um, so you move in in September you move out at Christmas you move in in January you move out in Easter you move back in after Easter and then you move out again at the end of the year so it's lots of kind of like toing and froing um, and obviously moving your stuff in storage which can be obviously can be a pain, I guess, if you're moving stuff out, but also can be a benefit as well, because again, like Philip said, you're condensing your stuff down, and you're not kind of carrying as much. A 38 week letting period is obviously a bit more expensive because you have the extra eight weeks. And basically it'll mean you will move in in September and move out in June. So you won't have to move in and out over those periods of time. And you have your room there, whether or not you want it. So say for example, you go home for Easter, you, you go home for a week and you decide you've had enough at home, you can go back and you've got your, got your room already. Um, when it comes to living in the private sector, um, often it will be a 38 week letting period or something like along those lines. Um, some some students are able to get a 52 week letting period, which is like the whole year, so the whole summer and stuff, but they're a lot rarer um, with, with with landlords that uh, rent students. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, kind of the key difference, I guess. Um, is there a sort of check-in time for students living in university accommodation? So like working late, studying late, and then returning back to your accommodation, is there kind of like a curfew and stuff? Um, did you wanna, did you wanna answer Philippa? Yeah, no, there's not a curfew. Um, you have a key, so when I lived in Founders, you have a pass that means that you can get into your room and um, they would lock the corridors after, I think it was 10 o'clock, just to make sure there wasn't anybody who didn't live on that corridor, like coming in and out as they as they wanted. Um, but there's not, there's not a curfew or anything or a time that you have to be back. That was more just to make sure that um, everybody who was in the corridor was, was wanted in the corridor, um, but, everything's everything's so technologically updated now you know you're never going to be locked out or no one's going to be you know you're an adult no one's going to be calling you and saying why are you not home um you're free to to come back as late as you want or go to bed as early as you want <laughs> yeah definitely um it is is there's a lot more independent and stuff um the, your halls of residence like philip said might yeah like lock or they might have like a like a soft curfew for like guests and stuff i guess um so yeah again that's kind of down for you to kind of like um interpret that how you will and kind of interpret that how kind of you, you see fit and how you understand it um at Royal Holloway we do have like a back gate like Philippa referenced I think in an earlier answer um which is a gate at the bottom of campus and I think that closes at 12 it's 12 till 5 yeah, it's, it's closed quite late. <laughs> yeah so so even if you've kind of like I remember going to a gig once and kind of getting back at Egham at the station at like half 11 and sprinting to the back gate before it locked like it's, um, you know, it, it, it is quite late anyway. And there's other, obviously other ways to get onto campus as well. So you're kind of not like, you're not back by the time that gate locks. You're not like locked out. There's there's always- You just have to go the long way around. Yeah, you have to go up, up, up Egham Hill and yeah, through Pickery Gate or through the main gate or something like that, which is obviously um, a pain really. Um, but but Royal Holloway specifically um, is kind of one of the safest campuses in the UK. We have a really good 24 um, hour security team. Um, so it's a really kind of safe community because it's all enclosed on the campus as well, which is which is great. Um, 
So we've got to the end of our questions, I believe. Um, I think we have one more, but we do have we do have still uh, 15 minutes or so. So if you, if any of you do have any further questions, please do pop them in the chat and, and we'll, we'll get to them in a second. So I think the one we'll do we'll do this one more and then we'll see where we're at. So um, what made you decide in your first year to live on campus rather than living at home? I was so ready to move out to university. I had a lot of friends who went to university and, you know, like a couple of towns over. But I knew that I wanted to move out of the, the town that I lived in. I was ready to live somewhere else and be independent. You know, I'm an only child. So I was ready to not have my mum and dad constantly looking over my shoulder and knowing everything that I was up to. Um, not that I was any doing anything bad, but <laughs> um, yeah, I was just ready for that level of independence. So I knew that well I, well I knew that when I visited Royal Holloway that I wanted to live in Founders I you know I drove into the gate the front gate and I saw the building and I just immediately knew that's where I want to live um and I think it being being a fairly small university town it made that transition a lot easier because I wasn't overwhelmed with moving to a big city and not knowing where anything is or how to get there um so I knew that Royal Holloway was a place for me and that smaller town but still having you know, Windsor and London really close was something that I wanted. Yeah, really good. Did out of interest, did you, did you live close enough to be able to commute to university, or was it a case that like it would have been a bit too far? Um, so it would have been a bit too far. So I grew up in Kent. Mm. Um, but so I'm a commuting student now, but I live in London because I moved to London after I graduated, and I live with a housemate who actually lived with in my second and third year at university. So, nice. um. I didn't move back home after university, uh, but I've had. I feel like I've had the whole. She's kind of like my mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's just a bit too far away for me, and I knew that I didn't want to live at home. I think I knew that from when I was looking at universities, even. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I um, I had very similar sort of uh, all of the. I looked at the. I, I'm from also from Kent, like Southeast Kent. So I looked at the University of Kent but kind of knew that that wasn't really for me. Nothing against the University of Kent, it's a fantastic university, but it was just a bit too close. And I kind of knew that I was kind of the opposite. I'm like the youngest of six children. So I was like, I just want to get out um, of, of this being the youngest, I guess. Um, so I knew I didn't really want to go to the University of Kent and kind of the local university for me. I wanted to go a little bit further away, um, but also I ended up going to Royal I had the same thing. I, I remember driving in and thinking, yeah, this is where I want to go. I want to live here, I want to study here. Um, and yeah it was it, again it would have been too far i think it was about three and a half hours on the train um to get back uh, back to margate where i'm from um it was just too far it was it would have been i couldn't have done that every day especially for like a nine o'clock lecture or like if i was having like a late night with friends or something like that, it just wasn't feasible um but i think even if i did live closer especially in my first year and it's advice that I, I often give to students um and it's advice that i've had from friends who live nearby Royal holloway they grew up near Royal holloway but still decided to live in their live in halls in their first year is that I suggest if you can living in halls in your first year purely because I think it just gives you that like typical university experience so to speak um, because you are on campus you're getting kind of everything's on your doorstep and you meet so many different people by being there um, I said universities do low for commuting students or, or try to do as much as they can for commuting students and you know lots of commuting students as well make friends and do stuff like that one of my best friends was a commuting student in the second and third year um, and again, you know, that, that didn't lessen her experience by any mean, uh, any means at all. Um, it was just very different or quite different. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really down to a personal decision. It's down to your personal circumstances as well. And kind of I said, where you live or where you grew up and where you're going to university and financial and, and lots of different things. Um, my advice is kind of don't be put off by moving because you're a little bit like, um, you might worry about being homesick or something like that. It's kind of very natural, natural part of university. Some students, uh, do get a bit homesick some students kind of just thrive in that environment um but that's kind of i think a part of that kind of moving away experience and stuff so so yeah there's kind of no right or wrong but um but yeah you just have to kind of work out what's best for you i did have a i grew up in kent as well but i did have a friend here in my third year he commuted from kent uh to wow. royal holloway um he studied music and i think he just wanted to be at home he'd mm. lived on he'd lived on campus in his first year he'd lived um in private halls in his second year um, and I think when it came to third year, he just, he knew he'd got his schedule, schedule yeah. in advance and he just knew that, you know, his contact hours weren't so high and he knew that he wanted to live at home and be in that environment. Mm. So even though it was far, it was something that, you know, the driving wasn't a problem for him. Yeah. He had friends like me, you know, we had a driveway that he could park on. So, 
there are ways of navigating you know if you want to live at home but it's a bit far it's not always an issue and with Royal Holloway specifically that's that's kind of one of the one of the really good things is that we're really well located in our respect we're just off the M25 so if you are coming from the southeast or if you're coming from even you know further midlands that sort of way it, it's really nicely connected you're not too far if you come off a junction you're there basically um and even with the train like we're on the reading to waterloo line reading kind of goes from bournemouth right up to manchester and you know waterloo obviously it's connected everywhere so um so yeah there's lots of kind of different um kind of options like you said if, if whether or not you kind of you said you decide that actually you just want to be at home and live at home and stuff um that's obviously feasible even though it might be a, a little bit longer Okay, so that's all the questions we've had. Um, so I'm going to take the fact that we haven't had any more um, the last kind of five minutes or so as kind of the end of the questions. Um, I hope everybody's found that interesting. I hope that's been enjoyable. Um, I'm just going to turn my webcam off while I kind of sort of close things up. Um, so if you do want to know any more about Royal Holloway and you're kind of or kind of want to know more about any of the content that we've kind of talked about today, um, best place to look is on the Royal Holloway website at um, www.bit.ly dash rh underscore resources where you have a whole host of resources to do with the whole university cycle including videos uh, worksheets workshops like this and um, you can ask questions to current students uh, at bit.ly dash raw holloway underscore chat and i'll put all these links in the chat at the end as well and finally we, um, if you are thinking about applying to university currently um we have a personal statement review service uh, which is a free review service where we'll look through your personal statement and that's at bit.ly dash ps review service um if you do want to download a prospectus or um, order a prospectus, you can scan the QR code there or, or drop down the link there, which is bitly prospectus 20 um, And you can also um, sign up to our mailing list as well, which is bitly rhul underscore mailing list. And again, I'll put all these links in the chat for you. Um, if you wanted a recording of today's session, um, you can, it has been recorded, so you can get a copy of it um, on YouTube and just need to email um, uh, schools at royalholloway.ac.uk. And again, I'll put all that in the chat. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you very much for coming along today. Thank you so much, Philippa, for your insight and kind of giving us your experience as well. It was really, really cool to hear from you and, and get kind of your perspective of being both living on campus, living in the private sector and also commuting to university. So thank you very much. Um, big thank you to my colleague, Amelia, who's been uh, lurking in the chat as well. Um, so thank you very much, Amelia. Uh, and thank you very much, all of you, for, for coming along today. I hope it's been insightful and interesting. What I'll do now is before I end the call, um, I'll, pop in the, I'll pop in the links in the chat uh, for you. Um, if you are leaving us now, please make sure to fill in the evaluation form as well. That will pop up after you've left the call as well. Um, just to let us know any feedback. Otherwise, thank you very much.